Okay, I'll hop on my way up here. So, <laughs> what they ask is, they say, all right, pretend this is a point that's on a terminal side. So, now what we're going to be dealing with is we're going to deal, be dealing with points that are not on the unit circle. So, therefore, we're to find, uh, <clears throat> to evaluate our functions, we're going to have to use a right, a right triangle. So, first of all, I need to figure out where this point is. Well, negative 410. I can say, well, here's my initial side, and I'll just go all the way to here. That's where negative 410 is. So pretty much what they want us to do now is they want us to evaluate our um, um, evaluate for the exact uh, for the six trig functions. So if I was to create a right triangle for this angle theta, I could say this is negative four, and that would be 10, right? Now remember, they say to evaluate the six trig functions. So remember we talked about sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, cosecant, and secant. Those all, we can all use a right triangle by knowing our hypotenuse our, and our two legs, the opposite and the adjacent. So I don't know right now what my hypotenuse is. So I can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what my hypotenuse is. So this would be 100 plus, 16 equals c squared. So 116 equals c squared. Take the root. So therefore, c equals the square root of 116. And we said that 29 goes in there four times. So I can take out the square root of 4. Square root of 4 would be 2. Radical 29. All right? So now, if I have my triangle, 2 times the radical square root of 29. All right? Now, <clears throat> they want us to find all of our values. So we need to do sine of theta, cosine of theta, and tangent of theta. So the sine of theta, if you guys remember, is going to be um, opposite over hypotenuse. Well, if here's my theta, my opposite side is going to be 10 over 2 radical 29. So quickly, I can automatically simplify this to obtain 5 over radical 29. Then if I rationalize the denominator by multiplying the 29 on top and the bottom, my final answer is 5 square root of 29 all over 29. So that's how you find the sine of theta. Well, cosine of theta is going to be the exact same thing, except now it's Cosine, remember, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be a negative 4 over 2 radical 29. And I'll do this one a little bit quicker. You can cancel those out. Negative 2 over radical 29. And again, when you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the square root of 29 on the top and the bottom, what you'll get is negative 2 radical 29 over 29. All right? Tangent, opposite over adjacent, 10 over negative 4. Cool. So now the next thing, guys, we have sine, cosine, and tangent. Remember, if I'm going to use now my <clears throat> the reciprocal properties of these, I have cosecant, which is the reciprocal of sine, which is hypotenuse over opposite. So all I'm going to do here is take 2 radical 29 over 10. Well, those cancel out to give me radical 29 over 5. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so that's going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. Well, the hypotenuse, again, was 2 radical 29 over negative 4. Those simplify to give me radical 29 over negative 2. And the last one is cotangent. And that's going to be um, op or hypotenuse over adjacent. So that's going to be a negative 4 over 10. I don't know why. Do you have to? Hmm? Yeah. Uh, yeah, just like we're simplifying everything else. Simplify it with those terms. Okay. Does anybody have any last questions on that?
on what I did. Just remember, when we're dealing with a point and it's not on the unit circle, you can't use our unit circle to find those, you know, the x and y coordinates. So what we're going to have to do is create a right triangle and then use um, the side lengths of the triangle to evaluate our six trig functions. Okay?